Hello everyone. Welcome to this new module in the course. In this module, we are going to look at the conditional generation capabilities of a diffusion model. As I mentioned the previous time, conditional generation refers to the idea of generating a particular data sample conditioned on another type of modality. Now this can be text conditioned image generation or class conditioned image generation and so on. The idea is to sample from the conditional distribution rather than sampling from a marginal distribution. So in this module we will look at how to modify the structure of a DDPM so that one can sample from a conditional distribution. To be able to do that uh, we will have to look at uh, multiple parallel formalisms, formulations of a DDPM. So far we have understood DDPM, the training of the DDPM as the denoising where given a particular uh, data sample with added noise which is the tth which can also be seen as the tth uh, latent variable. We build a neural network which is a regressor which would predict what was the initial data point upon which this noise was added. So we also saw another formulation where this neural network was uh, considered as a regressor over the mean of the distribution, the true uh, reverse distribution. So now with the goal of modifying the diffusion model to be able to sample from the conditional distributions, we will first look at alternate formulations of it, one as the noise predictor, the other as the predictor of the score of the distribution and then use that formulation to modify the diffusion model to be able to sample from a conditional distribution. So that is the overview of what we are going to do now. First let us look at uh, alternate interpretations of a DDPM. alternate interpretations of a DDPM. The first way that we look at is so DDPM as a noise predictor. So this is one of the very famous interpretation that is uh, used in the original paper of the DDPM. So DDPM as regression over regression over added noise. So all of these uh, reformulations are based on uh, some sort of reparameterization of the, uh, the same equations that we saw. So fundamentally nothing is changing, only we are uh, reparameterizing or reformulating the underlying uh, equations of the consistency term and express expressing it in different ways so that we have different ways of interpreting the same result. Okay. So let us look at it, recall that. The forward process of DDPM forward process of DDPM does the following. So, what does it do? We define x t, which is the tth latent variable, or one can look into that as uh, the tth noisy version of the data as root of alpha t times x naught plus root of 1 minus the power here uh, because we are recursing so alpha t bar times uh, epsilon so let us call this uh, epsilon t where epsilon t is a sample that we have drawn from normal 0 1 right so this is the recursive definition of the tth latent variable that we derived in the previous uh, lectures. Okay. So just rearranging the above terms, so 
rearranging the above terms one can express x not the true data sample or the input data sample in terms of xt the tth latent variable or the noisy sample and the added noise so what is epsilon t here epsilon t is the noise that is added to xt uh, to x not to make it xt right so let me write that down so an epsilon t can be interpreted as the noise that is added to x not noise added to x not to convert it into x t right that is what our uh, uh, epsilon t is and we did it uh, using the recursive formulation so now x not can be represented in terms of x t and the noise that was added to that okay now recall also recall that in the consistency term of uh, the elbow that we uh, derive for so consistency term in the elbow had this particular form right it was mu theta minus mu q so it was the difference between the norm of uh, mu theta and mu q uh, where mu theta mu mu q was the mean of q of x t minus 1 given x t and x naught this was the so called true distribution true reverse distribution and mu theta was the mean of the decoding distribution at t minus 1 this was the definition of uh, this was how we derived this now this is how we got the consistency term so now the question is uh, can we represent this particular consistency term in terms of the noise that is added is the question that is what we are going to do so to that let us represent so represent mu q in terms of in terms of x t and epsilon t so now can we represent the mean of uh, the distribution the true distribution that comes up in the consistency term in terms of x t and epsilon t so that is the question it turns out that it can be done because so mu q was a function of x t and x naught right this is what our definition of mu q was what was it it was root of alpha t times 1 minus alpha bar t minus 1 this into x t so remember that mu q was simply a linear combination of x t and x naught right and the linear com the coefficient of the linear combination was given by the product of uh, these two terms 1 minus alpha t times uh, x naught divided by sorry, the, we have the entire thing scaled by 1 minus alpha t bar so this was the definition of uh, the uh, mu q which is the mean of which is the mean of uh, the uh, true reverse distribution okay so that was the definition that we used now what we should do is we have our x naught that we have uh, expressed in terms of x t and epsilon naught let's call this equation 1 so now replacing x naught here so replacing replacing x naught above using equation 1 so if we replace our x naught using equation 1 uh, which uh, writes x naught in terms of x t and uh, uh, epsilon t then let me rewrite this so in that case my mu q here uh, x naught will be this particular thing so now what are we doing here simply representing x naught in terms of 
xt and epsilon and t so that the entire expression now will become a function of xt and epsilon and t so this part is simply x not okay now i'll skip the algebra one can simply rearrange the terms and uh, group them together uh, finally um, i'll just write the final expression this, this will be 1 by root of uh, alpha t times xt minus 1 minus uh, alpha t divided by root of 1 minus alpha t bar into root of alpha t and this is multiplied by epsilon t so please note that uh, the noise epsilon is also of the same dimension as that of data okay, that also is in rd therefore mu q is still uh, in uh, the dimension of R rd so that now it becomes a linear combination of xt and epsilon t so what was the linear combination between xt and x not in the combination of xt and x not now is a linear combination of xt and epsilon t okay so now this mu q which shows up in the consistency term is represented in terms of so now this is no longer a function of xt so now this became a function of xt and uh, epsilon t so uh, I beg your pardon it's no longer a function of x not it's a function of it is represented in terms of uh, xt and epsilon t okay so once we do this we'll do the same thing for mu theta as well so mu theta as we know is a function of xt right so and using the same uh, argument that we used before that because it's our design choice we can always reparameterize this mu theta in terms of uh, something that looks very similar to mu q and designate everything that we learn as one of the parameters so this is uh, alpha t times the same thing root of alpha t into epsilon theta okay epsilon theta cap let's call it this is a function of xt okay so now this is very similar to what we did when we reparameterize uh, the reparameterized mu q and mu theta in terms of xt so what was the idea the idea is that uh, if you have a gaussian random variable then you can always scale it and shift it with whatever constant that you need and uh, get it back to uh, the mean that is needed so all we are saying is if this if we represent this epsilon cap theta using a neural network then the neural network can always learn the scale and shift that is the idea so why do we do this we do this just to ensure that our mu theta looks similar to mu q and when we compute the consistency term the, ca the the constants and the shifts gets cancelled away so that the expression looks a little elegant that's all okay now if we do this now the current consistency term will be as follows so consistency term which was the norm of the difference between these two vectors now will simply become so recall that this was actually equal to uh, 1 by was a 1 by 2 uh, sigma q squared term okay so that will just retain so this will be now 2 q 2 sigma q squared just plugging in the definitions of uh, uh, mu q and mu theta as we have written here everything all the terms will cancel away so what we will have is a constant here which will be 1 minus alpha t squared divided by 1 minus alpha t bar times alpha t uh, times whatever is there inside now will be epsilon t minus epsilon cap theta This is now a function of x t. So note that epsilon epsilon t and epsilon theta are both again uh, d-dimensional vectors. Okay. So this is another re reparameterization. So what did we say is that I'll just remove the constant and write that the consistency term is now proportional to uh, but for a constant difference between the noise that was added. To x naught to make it xt and the output of the neural network. 
okay so now this problem can be now looked into as regression regression over the added noise this is another formulation where you see the training of ddpm as regression over added noise and let me just uh, copy this uh, uh, network diagram so that we can express it, express this in terms of regression over so we already saw two interpretations right and one interpretation was that this neural network is taking xt and predicting the mean of uh, the distribution uh, q of xt minus 1 given xt and x not this is the other interpretation was that this neural network is taking xt and it is predicting x not okay, regression over x not which is predicting the the uh, which is the denoising task here is a third interpretation where you say that this neural network is taking xt and t and what it is predicting is the noise that was added to x not okay to make it xt so regression regressor on the added noise so another interpretation of it so this is the interpretation that you see in uh, the original paper uh, or the original research article that proposed adpm as a regressor over noise okay uh, so i will write that this is regressor over epsilon t minus epsilon theta cap which is a function of xt this neural network is now taking xt so basically what is it doing given an image or a data point that has noise okay this is predicting what was the amount of noise that was added to this neural network sorry added to this x not to make it xt right so you can now very well see the relationship between this and the previous interpretation where if you are given xt if you are predicting x not which is the denoising task okay you need to implicitly understand what was the noise that was added to x not to make it xt right other, other without knowing what was the noise that was added to x not to make it xt uh, there is no way that you are predicting x not given xt right so here instead of uh, uh, seeing it as predicting x not here we are seeing it as predicting the noise that was added to directly predicting the noise that was added to x not to make it xt so this is another interpretation of edpm and this interpretation is often uh, shown in uh, in a lot of uh, uh, papers and other discussions okay this was one interpretation